Rams, needing a victory to remain in contention for the Western Conference title, have their work cut out as they catch the world champion Detroit Lions on the rebound from their first defeat. Nearly 75,000 partisan fans cheer wildly in the opening period as the Rams' Skeet Quinlan scoots 23 yards to the Detroit 39. Ram razzle-dazzle, dazes Detroit. Tank Younger takes the ball and wheels around then for 28 yards to score for Los Angeles. Rams lead, seven to nothing. Detroit's Bob Horschmeyer packs the pigskin nine yards to the Los Angeles 21 as the Lions counter. The Los Angeles line holds firm from here, but Doak Walker delivers a 33-yard field goal that cuts the Los Angeles lead to seven to three. A Los Angeles pass, Norman Van Brocklin to Tom Fears, sears the Lions secondary and the ball's on the Detroit 14. The Rams crank their tank, and Younger powers through the Detroit line for his second touchdown. At the end of the first period, Los Angeles is on top, 14 to three. In the second quarter, the Rams' Van Brocklin punts from his own end zone. It's a very poor kick, which travels only 11 yards, and the Lions take over on the Los Angeles 17. Detroit takes advantage of this opportunity. Bobby Lane rifles a, a strike to Doran Dibble, who dives into pay dirt. Score now, Rams 14, Lions 10. Watch this play closely. Now the Rams have the ball, and now they don't. Leon Hart steals the pigskin from Skeet Quinlan, and the lumbering Lion lineman lopes to a touchdown. This fast turn of event gives Detroit a 17 to 14 halftime margin. Detroit sets out to increase its advantage in the second half. Lane passes to Jim Dorn, who goes out on the Rams 27. Another lane to Dorn toss is good for 11 yards. The Lions are stopped on the Los Angeles 16, but Doak Walker has the answer. The Doker's second field goal boosts Detroit's lead to 20 to 14. A Ram rally gets underway as Skeet Quinlan totes for 10 yards. Norman Van Brocklin, the leading passer in professional football, teams up with Elroy Hirsch on a beautiful 42-yard play that carries to the Detroit four. Dan Taller takes the hog hide on a wide ride to the end of the line. Taller's TD gives the Rams a 21-20 lead going into the final period. The rampaging Rams roll on. Tank Younger does the damage here as he powers to the line 49. A timely toss from Norm Van Brocklin to Big Bob Boyd is good for a 32-yard advance for Los Angeles. Detroit puts a halt to the Ram assault, but Les Richter toes an 11-yard field goal, making a 24-20 Los Angeles leading. Lion halfback Luke Carpenter spearheads a Detroit rally as he races 32 yards to the Los Angeles four-yard line. Punchy Horsemeyer finds a hole in the Los Angeles line, and over he goes. Detroit comes from behind to win, 27-24, and this victory gives the Lions the undisputed lead in the Western Conference. Paul fans were treated to a parade of upsets as five of the six National League games provided form reversals. Otto Graham and company were the principal actors in one of them, and Cleveland's Municipal Stadium was the stage as the hometown Browns took on the New York Giants. In the opening period, Cleveland's Otto Graham hits halfback Ray Renfro, and the play nets 14 yards to the Browns' 38. It's Otto again on the throw. Prime target this time is N. Dow Brewster for 16 yards. With the New York defense looking for another pass, Graham sends fullback Maurice Bassett up the middle for a 15-yard advance. 
Graham fakes a handoff and pitches far downfield, intended for Dante Lavelli. It misses fire, but interference is called on New York's Emlyn Tonnell, and it's first down Browns on the Giants' five. Otto Graham pushes into the snow-laden end zone with a Cleveland touchdown, and the Browns lead seven to nothing. Later in the opening period, New York's Buford Long ignites a giant drive with a 10-yard burst to his own 36. New York fullback Eddie Price breaks over the middle and rambles 47 yards before he's overtaken on the Browns' 17 on a desperation tackle by Warren Long. On the last play of the first quarter, New York's Frank Gifford picks up seven yards on an off-tackle slam. Buford Long keeps the giant drive moving in the second period with a six-yard canter to the Cleveland Five. Jolly Connerly skirts wide for three yards and a New York touchdown. The score is tied at 7-7. New York's Ben Agajanian kicks off, and the Browns' Billy Reynolds gathers it in on the Cleveland three. Behind a wave of blockers, Reynolds dashes up the middle, cuts to the side, and scampers 52 yards before being driven out of bounds on the New York 45. Eagle Eye Otto Graham passes complete to Ray Renfro on a 22-yard maneuver that puts the Browns in business on the Giants' 23. Otto Graham pitches to his favorite receiver, Donnie Lavelli, and it's touchdown Cleveland. At halftime, it's Cleveland Browns 14, New York Giants 7. In the third quarter, the Browns get a real break. Frank Gifford fumbles when hitting the line, and Warren Law recovers for the Browns on the New York 25. Cleveland's 230-pound fullback, Maurice Bassett, rolls wide on a 22-yard excursion that comes to a halt on the New York two-yard line. Otto Graham fights into the end zone for his second TD of the day, and the score now reads, Browns 21, Giants 7. New York's Charlie Connerly tries to get a passing attack underway, but alert Ken Cons intercepts and returns the pigskin to the New York 33. A penalty sets the Browns back to the Giants 42, where Otto Graham pitches to Dante Lavelli for 32 yards to the New York 8 as the third period ends. Another penalty shoves the Browns back to the 17, then Lou Groza boots a successful field goal, making it Cleveland 24, New York 7. The Giants swing play clicks as Frank Gifford deposits a pass into the arms of Eddie Price, who gallops all the way for a touchdown on a thrilling 83-yard play. But the Browns defeat New York 24-14 to throw the Eastern Division into a three-way tie for first between New York, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia. The Philadelphia Eagles, tied for first place in the Eastern Conference but showing the effects of a tough campaign, met one of the two Western Conference teams they'll have to face. It was the Green Bay Packers, fresh from two straight wins, and looking for more of the same under the lights at Philadelphia. The Packers elect to receive and promptly set out to make the Eagles breathe as rookie Burl Schweitzer pulls in the ball on the Packer three and heads upfield. At the 25, he cuts to the near sideline and gets past Jerry Norton. Norton finally hauls Schweitzer down, but not before he's returned 88 yards to the Eagle nine-yard line. The next nine yards proved to be too tough, and Fred Cohn tries a field goal from a bad angle. His placement is good, and the Packers take a fast three-point lead over the Eagles. Adrian Burke attempts to get the Eagles off the ground with an aerial attack, but his pass is picked off by a Packer back named Bobby Dillon. Dillon dodges and dances for 60 yards as his blockers mow down the Eagles. He doesn't stop till it's touchdown Green Bay, and the up-and-coming Packers take a 10-0 lead over Philadelphia in the first quarter. The Philadelphians fight back in the second period, with Bobby Thomason now in at quarterback. They take to the air again. Jim Palmer makes a boarding house reach to pull in the pass and put the Eagles on the Packer 45. 
From the 26, Thomason steps back to toss another one. Toy Ledbetter races into the clear to gather it in and scamper across the goal line as the Eagles get right back in contention with a big seven points to make it Packers 10, Eagles 7. The Eagles get possession on a punt and Thomason tries again. But this try goes awry when Val Joe Walker intercepts and gallops all the way back to the Philadelphia 25. Green Bay's Tobin Roth spots rookie Max McGee and lets fly. McGee pulls it in and gallops across on a 25-yard touchdown play that puts the Packers out in front of the Eagles 17-7 at halftime. In the third period, Tobin Road and Max McGee play an encore for the Philadelphia fans. McGee races to get behind his man while Rote rolls to his right, then hoists a beauty downfield. McGee's there, and it's a Packer tally from 49 yards out to make it Green Bay 23, Philadelphia 7. As the Eagles attempt to strike back, Bobby Thomason snowed under. A Packer comes up with the ball, and Green Bay's once more on the move. Tobin Rote takes the helm, and his first act is to look for Max McGee. Max is available, and Tobin tosses him his third touchdown strike as the Packers take a 30-7 lead over the Eagles. As the fourth period begins, the Packers take advantage of an Eagle fumble and an interference penalty to strike again on a quarterback sneak from two yards out to boost the tally to a humiliating 37-7 count over the once-defeated Eagles. Philadelphia makes a belated thrust into Packer territory as Thomason fires to Jerry Williams on the Green Bay 26. Thomason keeps the Eagles on the wing with a pass into the flat to Toy Ledbetter. Toy turns in a sparkling run to bring the Philadelphians to the Packer 13. Fullback Jim Palmer polishes off the drive to make the final score read. Packers 37, Eagles 14. But the Packers notch their third straight win and keep the Eagles in a tie with the Steelers and the Giants for first place in the Eastern Conference. The rough, tough Pittsburgh Steelers locked in a tie with New York for first place in the Eastern Conference roll into Comiskey Park looking for a handy victory over the winless Chicago Cardinals. A victory which could give them the undisputed conference lead. But the motto in Chicago is... Don't deal out the cards. They have something entirely different in mind. The first break of the game goes in favor of the Steelers. Pat Brady gets off a booming punt from his own 35. Chicago's Les Goble fumbles the ball. George Hughes recovers. And Pittsburgh's in possession on the Cardinal 15. Quarterback Jim Fink steps back and completes a pass to L.B. Nickel for the remaining yardage. It's touchdown Steelers. It looks like Pittsburgh's on the way to a win as the Steelers post a fast seven points. Little do the Steelers and the fans realize that the complexion of the game will be completely changed on the next play. Holly Matson gathers in the kickoff on his own nine. The interference forms. Matson runs right up the middle, gets some beautiful downfield blocking, and the ground really moves under his flying feet to put Chicago in the scoring column. Matson's 91-yard run boosts the Chicago Cardinals into a 7-7 tie with Pittsburgh that remains intact through to the third period. In the third quarter, the Chicago Cardinals begin another march. Paul Barry gallops to the Chicago 44. Chicago moves into Steeler territory. A McCann to Ladd pass racks up a first down on the Pittsburgh 18. The stubborn Steelers brace, but Summerall's field goal attempt is good, and Chicago takes the lead over Pittsburgh at 10 to 7. Here goes almost a carbon copy of the play that led to a Pittsburgh score, only the tables are turned. Chicago's trolley trippy boots. Lynn Shadnoy bobbles the ball. Leo Sanford recovers, and it's the Cardinals in charge on the Steeler 28. As the fourth quarter begins, the Cardinals keep moving. Lamar McCann pitches a perfect pass to Don Stonecipher, who's rolled out of bounds on the Pittsburgh 18.
McCann again back to throw. Picks out Ollie Matson, and his choice is perfect as Matson crosses into the end zone for the tally that puts Chicago ahead 17 to 7 over the favorite Steeler. Pittsburgh starts to move goalward from its own 11. A Finks to Salima completion is good for a first down on the 25. A win here could put Pittsburgh on top of the Eastern Conference, but time is short. Finks fires for distance. Matthews hauls it in and bulls his way to the Chicago 27. <laughs> Moving right on downfield, L.B. Nickel is upended, but not before he pulls in Finks' pass on the Cardinals 17. The Steelers advance to the one. Johnny Lattner gets the honors and crosses for a Pittsburgh touchdown. But the clock counts the Steelers out as the Cardinals post a 17-14 upset victory and the Eastern Conference is again in a three-way tie. At Griffith Stadium in the nation's capital, the Washington Redskins looking for their first victory meet the Baltimore Colts. The Redskins are out to prove the adage that in professional football there is no underdog. Billy Wells gets a first quarter Washington drive underway with a 19-yard scamper to the Colt 29. Al Doro, former Michigan State All-American, pushes the Redskins closer to pay dirt with an 11-yard pitch to John Carson on the Baltimore 5, and the hometowners are hollering for a touchdown. A touchdown they get. Dale Atkinson pushes over from the 1, and it's Washington 7, Baltimore nothing as the first quarter ends. The thrills are just starting. Early in the second period, Washington's Darrow stepped back and hits halfback Billy Wells along the sideline. The fleet-footed Redskins scampers to the Baltimore three before he's hit and hit hard. The personal foul nullifies the play, and Washington elects to attempt the field goal. Rookie Vic Janowitz has his kick blocked. Redskin fullback Bob Goode picks up the pigskin and weaves his way in and out of Baltimore arms to the Colts 17-yard line. The skins drive on. Al Darrow throws. U. Taylor receives and Washington rolls to the six. Dale Atkinson gets the touchdown call again and the Redskin Warrior leaps into the end zone. Now it's Washington 14, Baltimore nothing. Later in the second period, Baltimore comes to life with a pass from Gary Krikorian to Dan Edwards, who's thrown head over heels on the Redskin 37. Royce Womble keeps the Colt drive alive with a 14-yard dash to the Washington 9. Tiny but tricky, Buddy Young finishes the drive by streaking into the end zone for the touchdown that puts Baltimore back in the ball game at 14 to 7. With just minutes remaining in the half, Baltimore's Cotton Davidson has his pass intercepted by Washington's Dick Alban. Alban heads for the sideline, sees Madison Nutter coming, and steps out of bounds quickly. Michigan State's gift to the Redskins clicks again as master passer Al Darrow tosses to the fancy-footed Billy Well. Now watch this boy go. It's a sensational Washington touchdown. The Redskins lead Baltimore 21-7 as the first half ends. The Colts won't be counted out. Gregorian flips to Lloyd Coltrion, who's hit hard on the Redskins 17. Trying desperately to get back in the ball game, Gregorian throws long, and it's complete to Dan Edwards for a Baltimore touchdown. The third quarter ends, and the Colts trail 21 to 14. The fourth quarter starts with the Redskins on the war path. Billy Wells takes an Aldoro pass and runs head on into the Colts' Ken Jackson on the Baltimore 43. It looks like it's Darrow's day as the Redskin quarterback completes another to end Ed Barker on the 10. When the Redskin drive is halted, a field goal by rookie Vic Janowitz gives Washington a 24-14 lead. Later in the period, Kerkorian keeps Baltimore's hopes alive with a pass to Royce Womble that moves the Colts to the Redskin 16-yard line. 
Gregorian throws again, but his pass is almost intercepted by Redskin George Russo, who drops the ball and gets slightly annoyed. Buddy Young takes a pass in the flat and carries Baltimore to the two-yard line. Zolly Toth smashes over from the two, and it's a touchdown for the Colts. Time runs out on Baltimore, and the Redskins put together their first victory, 24-21 over the Colts. The finale of Pro Football's Upset Parade featured the 49ers of San Francisco, defending their first place spot in the Western Conference. The 49ers figure Chicago's young Bears to be a juicy morsel to add to their undefeated string. The Bears are not about to hold still for anything of the kind. Partisan 49er fans rock Keysar Stadium as Y.A. Tittle takes advantage of a bear fumble by launching a long pass to Billy Wilson. Wilson wheels into the end zone and the prospectors open a 7-0 margin. The Bears begin to rewrite the script that had been prepared by the nation's sports experts. George Blanda and rookie Harlan Hill get together on a perfect pass play of 47 yards and a touchdown as the Bears square it off at 7-7, still in the first quarter. San Francisco opens up the second quarter in slam-bang style. John Henry Johnson, the prospector's prized rookie, pounds through the Bears on a jolting journey that ends in the end zone to put the 49ers once more in the lead at 14-7 over Chicago. George Blanda, the Bears' air arm, cocks that arm and passes downfield. But there's no bear at the other end. It's 49er Al Carapella making a nifty interception and adding a 27-yard run back as San Francisco takes over. The 49ers look more like the Western Conference leaders as they send Hugh McElhenney crashing over the middle on a 16-yard touchdown gallop that vaults the prospectors into a 21-7 halftime lead. In the third quarter, with the 49ers on the move, a tittle toss bounces out of Billy Wilson's arms and into the hands of S.J. Whitman. Whitman returns 27 yards, and a piling-on penalty puts the Bears on the 49ers 48. Burley John Hoffman takes a handoff and turns right end on a sweep that puts Chicago on the San Francisco 20. George Blanda moves the Bears through the air. He hurls for the jackpot. It's Harlan Hill holding it in for his second touchdown as the Bears chew away at that 49er lead. Score now, 49ers 21, Bears 14. The Bears open the wild fourth quarter by making it 21-17 on a bland field goal, and the 49ers set out to do something about that with a towering Tittle to McElhenney pass that puts the prospectors on the Chicago 24. Tittle keeps the prospectors on the trail with an over-the-middle pass to Billy Wilson on the eight-yard line. The Bears untrack the 49er attack, but Gordy Saltaw's talented toe increases the San Francisco lead as his field goal makes it 24-17 49ers. The Bears battle back with Blanda firing the furnace. He hoists a high one downfield. Jim Dooley makes a beautiful catch, and the Bears are on the 49er 15. If it's a touchdown you want, just hook up with Harlan Hill. Blanda does just that. Hill hustles across the for his third six-pointer, and the favored 49ers find themselves in a 24-24 tie with Chicago. The game's almost over, but don't leave your seats. The prospectors pass their way back upfield in one big bite as Y.A. Tittle picks out Pete Chevarin and fires a 42-yard strike. The woods are full of bears as Tittle goes back to try another pass. Y.A. gets away long enough to toss a short one to Joe Purry, who pile drives to the Bear 17. Gordy Saltaw sets toe to ball, and with just 36 seconds left to play, the 49ers get back into the lead at 27 to 24 over the Chicago Bears. But the Blazing Bears don't even need all of that 36 seconds. On the first play after the kickoff, Ed Brown looks downfield and spots Harlan Hill. That's the story as Hill gathers in Brown's pass and hustles over the goal line on a 66-yard scoring play. The Chicago Bears stun the San Francisco 49ers by upsetting them 31-27. Sports experts have selected the play of the week from the thrilling Bears 49er game. 
With 26 seconds to play, Chicago's Ed Brown takes a pitch out and whips a tremendous pass to Harlan Hill, who grabs the ball in the dead run and races across with his fourth touchdown of the game. This play sent the 49ers down to defeat for the first time this year. This is Jim Leeming saying so long for now. I'll be back next week, same time, same channel, with the greatest pro football plays of the week as the Detroit Lions visit Baltimore for a Saturday night game. The Cardinals meet the Eagles in Philadelphia. The Packers take on the Bears in Chicago. The Giants challenge the Steelers in Pittsburgh. The Redskins go against the Browns at Cleveland. And in what should prove to be a real battle, the 49ers entertain the Rams in San Francisco.